Hello, so in this little uh, tutorial we'll be doing the retopologizing, unwrapping, and we'll be getting everything ready, we'll, we'll bake every single map, we will do everything to just prepare for texturing. This is one of the boring parts of this whole thing, but it is absolutely necessary, so let's just dive into it pretty quickly. So, first things first, we want to export this one, so I'm gonna hit export. And I'm gonna say rock01 and I'm gonna say FBX and just uh, we're gonna add a suffix underscore high. So this is the high poly model and I'm just gonna click OK and the file is exported. Pretty good. Now how do we make a low poly out of this? There are definitely more than one way to do this. Uh, one of them being uh, zero mesher, but I found the best way for something like organic looking like a rock is to actually go ahead into Z plugin and we will go down to decimation master and we will decimate the model actually. So first click on pre-process current and it will process up the mesh. There we go. Uh, after you have processed the mesh, we will choose the percentage of decimation. And a rock like this, I think a thousand bodies is more than enough. So let's try 1% first. That's looking pretty decent in terms of uh, silhouette. The main thing you're going to be looking for is does this uh, actually look in silhouette like the rock? Uh, we have created and this is pretty good. We could probably go even further down with the decimation But I don't really want to uh, I don't really want to do this. I think this is pretty pretty cool so I'm just gonna go ahead export and the same thing here and I'm gonna say low here uh, and one thing I didn't do is I usually make folders, so ZBrush, and I'm just going to put this into the ZBrush folder and I'm going to move this one as well in here. Uh, this is underscore low. It's just so we know where did we get our files from. You'll see why that's useful a bit later. And just hit on save. Uh, mine is not saving for some reason. Let me just check. Again, so just uh, rock01 low.fbx and save. Okay, file exported, and that is pretty much it for ZBrush. We can close it down, and I'm gonna head into Blender. So here we are in Blender. We have our little simple project here, nothing going on. Uh, you'll notice that it is a bit customized, but I, that shouldn't be much of a problem. So first thing we do is go to file and we will import all our little models and our models should be in here and then here and both of them. I'm just going to import the FBXs. Now you'll notice two things mainly that, uh, well, these are very wrongly scaled. So if I scale that up, just set the scale to one. There we go, two meters, uh, for the sake of it, I would do two. Oops. And this is like either a big boulder, I'm, j I'm gonna go back to one. I think one is better off, but we can do whatever we want later on. So next thing is I want to move both of them, with both of them selected, I want to move them up. So they sort of match this X line. Uh, and we are done here, so we will now figure out which is low and which is high. This should be high poly. If I press tab, yeah, this is definitely high poly. So we will do rock01 high. There we go. And in here, rock01 low poly. So we have both of them uh, amply named. And um, for this one, you can usually like rotate it around 
and get some cool results as well. You can see. But I think I want to set origin to 3D cursor. And 3D cursors, cursor is in the world origin. So we have them at the bottom here, as you can see. So next thing, I want to move them around so I know what I'm working with. And with the low poly, Decimation Master can uh, mess up uh, quite a few times uh, when it comes to the low poly, the decimated version of it. So just go around, check it if everything is okay. If everything is okay, we, we are free to uh, move on. So <clears throat> next thing is I want to unwrap this one. So I'm just going to press Shift and H and the thing I need to do is the typical uh, unwrapping of literally anything is just select the 90 degree angles. And now we don't have really 90 degree angles if you see here. And that can be a problem, but uh, it's easily fixable. So we'll just select a few sides. So something like this. And I'm gonna go into here, into here and into here and this is a good way to mark the seam and i'm just gonna mark the seam and how you do that is uh, you can you can go and search mark the seam here and you can i think it's in the u panel yeah i have it on quick favorites just uh, so it's easier for me to mark it it's just a personal preference uh after that we will move like this and then we'll go towards this, mark the seam again. Uh, and again, the same thing. Mark seam. And I think I'm gonna pull this one up. Uh, I think it's better. I'm not completely sure here. But I'm just gonna do what currently feels... I should. So let's just mark this for now. And we can then pull out this into here and mark. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, this is all about just uh, strategically placing all of these. But it's nothing special. Uh, really, like we will be using one little trick in a Substance Painter to actually uh, have better textures, even though the unwrap for this one will be kind of weird. So I'm just gonna go around all the way here, mark the seam, and then here, and we can meet these up here. And then this one. Yeah, these are the weird ones that we are going to have some struggles with. But I think with a little bit of uh, widths, we can actually make them work quite nicely. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and this one here as well. There we go. This one seems pretty okay. Uh, Although we could have like a cut here. Let's give it a shot. So something like this. Uh, oh, yeah. This one is a bit of a weird one. So just uh, press double G to move it along one of the at uh, one of the to one of the vertices. And I'm gonna do it like this. And uh, I'm gonna mark this one instead of this. Actually, uh, this seems even better. Or maybe even this. Yeah. I'm sort of figuring out some of these on the fly to see what would work best. And this is how usually you would do it as well. It's just messing around until you find something that feels like it will work. So... Aside from that, I think I'm gonna mark this one. And 
more or less that would be it and now I have my uh, plugin here that I like to use but uh, for the purpose of this video I'm not gonna use it I'm just gonna press unwrap there we go and I'm gonna bring up the, the little tab here uh, or go to UV editing for me it's easier to do this uh, and now <coughs> What I usually do is just pack these textures. Uh, these textures, if I check, uh, should be quite nice already. Yeah, 60% UV coverage is pretty decent already. And now you can usually use a uh, UV packer to just get a bit of like, yeah, 72%. Uh, UV packer is a completely free add-on. I'll link everything I use in the description as always. So you can know, I usually use UV Packmaster, which is just a bit of a better version for this, but uh, the UV Packer gave a 72%, which is honestly more than I could ever ask for. It's pretty amazing. So I would say that this is even, uh, uh, this is quite good and it doesn't need any changes really. I could go and add like one more here, um, maybe something here, but I don't want to bother too much. It's a pretty simple rock uh, and I think a simple unwrap will work just fine. We can even maybe remove this one, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, I brought up the hidden objects by pressing Alt H. And now one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the add-on called Blender for Unreal Engine. And this is also a free add-on. I'll have it linked, don't worry. And what I like doing is uh, setting this add-on up just so it's easier for all the bakes and our project looks a bit more uh, a bit more organized. You will see that if um, if I want to actually bake these two, if I exported them as they are, they wouldn't really uh, export nicely. They wouldn't bake at all. They wouldn't bake properly because of uh, the multiple um, the multiple features, because they're not next to each other, basically. Because they're not in one another, so to say. They need to be inside one another, like this, for them to be able to bake properly. But I, I like to keep uh, stuff organized by keeping them uh, next to each other inside my Blender files. But this uh, little add-on helps me really make all of these um, a bit more usable, so to say. So how you use the add-on is just you set the um, object to export recursive here. And another thing I like to do is only select it in the selection filter. Uh, and I'm just gonna make it a bit wider so you can see everything uh, in there. And another thing you can see is nomenclature. It will add the smart, uh, the static mesh automatically, SM underscore. And another thing uh, about this is this will save these files in the folder where your Blender file is saved. So just to keep that in mind. Uh, now I want to do this. I do sl uh, slash slash meshes. This means that it will it'll make a meshes folder and it will put them inside of the meshes folder. And another thing for the high poly, in the subfolder name here, you can say high poly rocks, doesn't matter. And now when you export it, it will export in the meshes folder and it will make another folder that is high poly, poly rocks and it will put the high poly in there. And now if I need to make any changes to any of these, uh, I, I can just, let's say I need to change a UV map. It's a one click export and I'll show you exactly how. So you have uh, a little button here. I do that. I added it to quick favorites. Let me show you. So add to quick favorites. And you can see it's up here. And now if I select these, it's literally uh, a one click export, but it says that I need to save the blend file. So as I said before, I'm just gonna save as, and uh, this is not where I want them. So I'm just gonna 
go back to my uh, folder here and I'm gonna say blender actually I don't uh, actually I want to make a new folder here I want to have everything in here because he will make the folders for me and I'm just gonna say rock mini series here uh, and save as there we go and now if I hit export for Unreal Engine both of these assets will export and they're both ready for baking and everything else and now I'll meet you in Substance Painter for uh, the baking part of this video.